I would like to thank and apologize to Becca Sharp uh, for joining us today. We are running about 25 minutes behind schedule. So I uh, appreciate your grace uh, from all of you as we, we did time this yesterday. We had just a little bit more long-winded today, I guess. Um, but Becca Sharp graciously adjoined, uh, agreed to join the, the meeting today. Becca is a Biden administration presidential appointee uh, serving the, as the regional director for the Europe, Mediterranean, and Asia, EMA region at Peace Corps headquarters. She began in March of this year. At uh, the agency, she oversees 20 posts, including 800 staff, approximately. Sharp's uh, global development career began as a Peace Corps, uh, began with her Peace Corps service uh, during which she co-founded an award-winning reproductive health and youth volunteerism NGO in Kazakhstan, where she served, and that still exists today. Uh, congratulations on your Peace Corps service, Becca. Uh, Becca served, uh, worked extensively across Central Asia, Eastern Europe, and East Africa, and has uh, a specialty in, uh, in her career in impact evaluation, strategic consulting, behavioral economics, project design, and business development. She holds a BA with honors from Harvard University, an MBA from the Yale School of Management, and MPA in International Development from Princeton. Uh, Becca, thank you again for joining us. We're really looking forward to hearing what's going on with the return to the field and uh, anything else you'd like to share with us. And perhaps I'll squeeze in a few questions uh, of my own uh, after you wrap up. Thank you so much, Dan, and thank you, everyone. Those are actually very hard acts to follow. I feel like uh, I have met on this call some legends of Peace Corps, including former director Jody Olson. Um, really just lovely to be here today and honored to be here, and thank you for the invitation uh, and for the commitment it takes to join a Zoom call on what's turning out to be quite a lovely Saturday. Um, I looked at the uh, introductions in the Zoom chat, and I just wanted to shout out uh, there were there was an RPCV Kazakhstan, actually a counterpart from Kazakhstan. So just incredible to see the global representation in this uh, in this virtual room, and particularly just the dedication of everyone who is part of the MPCA community of believing in the mission, the spirit, and the lifetime of service that comes with Peace Corps, and particularly um, exercising ownership in improving the Peace Corps. So thank you again for allowing me uh, to be here and speak today. So as, as Dan said in that um, really lovely introduction, my name is Becca Gong Sharp, and I'm the Regional Director for Europe, Mediterranean, and Asia. Maybe Jody or someone else can one day explain to me why that is a region at Peace Corps. <laughs> it's a very large, very diverse region, uh, and we fondly call it EMA or TIMA. After spending the last six years as an NGO executive of a fast-growing data and evidence global development nonprofit, I actually joined the Biden administration in this role just six months ago. And of course, uh, as Dan said, my bond to Peace Corps goes back much further. Um, I'm an RPCV from Kazakhstan, from the EMA region. So being appointed to this role is truly the honor of the lifetime and is really coming full circle for me. Uh, so happy to join my fellow dedicated and passionate RPCVs to celebrate the impact of the Peace Corps on the communities we served in and frankly, not least on our own lives, right? I always say that a defining learning of being a Peace Corps volunteer is realizing that you actually get so much more out of it than you can ever hope to have given. I was invited here by Dan to talk about the current state of the Peace Corps. And of course, I can specifically give you a lot of perspective on the Europe, Mediterranean and Asia region. Um, and we actually saw some of what I'm going to cover in my remarks and the wonderful awards that were given uh, earlier in this meeting. So needless to say, EMA is facing a lot these days. In March of 2020, we had the global evacuation of all Peace Corps volunteers for the first time in the agency's history due to COVID-19. And that was an extraordinary effort where all volunteers were evacuated safely in less than eight days. But the volunteers and the trainees were given very short notice that they had to depart from their communities and return home to the US. And you know, as Mariam um, so, so uh, wonderfully put it from her firsthand experience, it was a heartbreaking experience for many of them. And since then, we've been working tirelessly to get volunteers back to service, which is happening, um, more on that in a sec. 
And since that year, you know, our region in particular has faced even more unprecedented challenges. We had to shutter our program in China and just a few months ago, our post in Myanmar as well, due to the latest military coup. And of course, our largest post in the region and indeed in the world, Ukraine, has been under devastating attack due to the horrific Russian invasion, which continues to this day. The world has just never seemed more complicated than now with war, disease, and injustice seemingly glaring at us from the front page of the news every single day. But we are very lucky to all share the indefatigable spirit of the Peace Corps. And I'd like to tell you that through these unprecedented challenges, I've seen some of the most inspiring stories of my life emerge. Uh, I'm, it's my pleasure to share a couple of those stories with you today and briefly highlight some of the major positive developments of the agency, including developments that, of course, have benefited from uh, the wonderful support of NPCA and its members. So to start, we have to talk about COVID-19. Obviously, this pandemic has raged on. It's caused unbelievable tragedy. Many of us have lost loved ones. We've experienced social isolation. It's curtailed the opportunities for intercultural exchange. That means so much to this group for just the freedom to travel and go places or to meet and have the conferences and connectivity opportunities that we are used to. Um, but most significantly, it has set many countries back years, if not decades, with regards to public health, food security, and economic growth. And combined with that, the war uh, in Ukraine has caused devastating economic and financial effects across the globe. But true to its spirit, Peace Corps has risen in these darkest of times to the challenge of service. In the spring and summer of 2021, we deployed 158 volunteers through Peace Corps response to support FEMA in domestic COVID-19 vaccination efforts, which is only the second time in history that PCVs have served domestically, with the first being, of course, after Hurricane Katrina. And overseas, our staff have been very hard at work on COVID-19 holistic response and recovery, even as they have not had volunteers. So for example, in the Philippines, our Peace Corps staff have vaccinated nearly 10,000 Filipinos with transport provided by the Peace Corps drivers and staff such as the Peace Corps medical officers fanning out to mass vaccine clinics all across Metro Manila and other provinces. Um, at last week's Global Country Director Conference, the first one in seven years, my country directors told me that a silver lining of the pandemic and not having volunteers has been watching our dedicated Peace Corps local staff step up and show that during this great pause, they are an integral part of serving their own communities in this time of need. And I also wanted to uh, share with you again a little bit about the Peace Corps community's response to the invasion of Ukraine. Um, as soon as Russia invaded, Peace Corps was working day and night to support 54 staff on the ground. We organized uh, TDY, you know, temporary duty assignments to not only the U.S., but other posts welcomed Ukrainian colleagues um, to whoever could leave, which, of course, was a minority. Um, and we supported with as many financial and HR related uh, benefits as possible. And meanwhile, of course, as you saw in the award ceremony, an incredible Peace Corps effort was also happening across the border in Moldova, which is surrounded on three sides by Ukraine and received one of the largest per capita influxes of refugees, roughly 70,000 of which are still there in country. Our staff and Peace Corps Moldova partnered with a local restaurant owned by an RPCV living in Chisnau to create a donation collection center for refugees. And over the course of just that first month after the invasion, they served over 19,000 refugees, providing them with food, hygiene products, bedding, and clothing in that critical window of time before larger international organizations like the Red Cross and UNHCR had stood up their own support infrastructure. This past spring, I went to an event with Ukraine RPCVs at the Ukraine House here in DC. And the event was helping to fundraise for efforts um, by a PCV leader who had served in Ukraine for four years and met and married his Ukrainian wife during service. 
and they were both transporting first aid kits, personal first aid kits via plane to Warsaw on the weekends to distribute critical health supplies to the front lines while they were both working full-time jobs. If that is not the service of Peace Corps and the spirit of Peace Corps, you know, I really don't know what is. I've just been blown away by the strength and the determination and the generosity of the entire Peace Corps community. And despite all of these challenges, Peace Corps has really been pushing forward with innovation and with impact. You can see in our recently launched five-year strategic plan, which the Connect to the Future report uh, deeply informed, that we are reimagining Peace Corps to meet this unique moment in history. The three pillars of the plan are one, reimagining service, two, advancing equity, and three, delivering quality. The plan has ambitious strategic initiatives related to global COVID-19 response and recovery, climate change, of course, one of the biggest issues of our time, and improvements in diversity, equity, and inclusion at Peace Corps. And we've also piloted an innovative new virtual service program that allows RPCVs, like all of you, to continue lifelong service despite the barriers of the pandemic. And this is very exciting. This is actually pretty much hot off the presses from this month. We have just relaunched our virtual service program in Ukraine. So I saw a lot of uh, RPCVs Ukraine in the chat box and in the introductions. All of you can now sign up to engage with local Ukrainian organizations that need our support during these trying times. So even in the middle of a war zone when two-year volunteers cannot serve yet, the virtual service program allows Peace Corps to continue to partner with the communities that we care about. So Ukraine RPCVs, tell your friends, they can sign up right now for a 12 to 24 week engagement, starting with a time commitment of just five hours a week to serve communities who have been impacted by the war using a range of those excellent Peace Corps skill sets from translation to financial management to English club facilitation. So on that note, I just wanna leave you with the most important message of the day. Uh, the one thing, if you forget everything else I've said, please take this away. We need your help to spread the word that Peace Corps is back. We are living through really unsettling times and the need for the mission of Peace Corps, peace and friendship has just never been stronger. And in the past half year, we've made significant progress on the return of Peace Corps with 50 countries issuing invitations for volunteers and 600 PCVs already back across 27 countries, but we do have a long way to go. So to take one example in the EMA region, uh, also hot off the presses, we expect to welcome our first cohort of volunteers to Vietnam next month, a historic program opening that's only been 17 years in the making with the help of Barack Obama and John Kerry. And we're exploring new partnerships all the time. So if you have friends, your kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, friends of friends, please tell them to consider joining us in this momentous return. Because as we've all experienced, serving in the Peace Corps will change your life. It is really the toughest job you'll ever love. And as RPCVs, you are the very best spokespeople to relay the special experience of serving in the Peace Corps to Americans around the country. Through all these years, though a lot has changed, some things have not changed, like the individual level bonds that are formed of friendship, of generosity, of mutual respect, and of learning when you enter and immerse yourself in a community for years. We are the only people in the global development community and the U.S. foreign affairs apparatus that has this people to people model. So to all of you who were a part of the magic of Peace Corps and who are so committed to its ongoing success and evolution, I hope you will help us spread the word and inspire the next generation to follow in your impressive footsteps of service. And just a last quick shout out, if this event was not enough Peace Corps fun for you today and you are in the DC area, please come say hi to me at the Kennedy Center tonight where members of our Ukraine staff and other Peace Corps storytellers from around the world will be showcasing ethical storytelling, highlighting not just our PCVs, but actually primarily voices from our host country communities. So it's gonna be a very special event. If you are gonna be there, please come say hi to me. I would love to meet some of you. Thank you so much. Happy Thank to you. answer Thank questions you. in the breakout rooms.
Thank you so much, Becca. Well, that great update. I'm, I can I can feel your enthusiasm, and and you took my slide. You that was I did <laughs> saving <laughs> you time, know. Dan. <laughs> I, I I really appreciate you being here with us today, and I had a list of questions for you, and we really you know we're we're behind, but and we're gonna and we're definitely gonna try to adjourn by four p.m. So thank you all again for your your patience with us. Uh, I just want to ask you one question. You can take it either of two different ways. Um, as you talk to your country directors and your teams in the field uh, about the changes that have happened to Peace Corps, they, I've, I've got many friends, of course, that still work in, in the agency, and I understood how busy they were without volunteers even revamping training materials, revamping project planning materials, and how Peace Corps evaluates itself. And I'm just curious, what is the one thing that you feel your post uh, leadership are most excited about, about the, the, the changes that Peace Corps has implemented? Or you could take it the other direction. What is the biggest challenge uh, to implementing the change that Peace Corps wants to see in the field? I think that people are very excited about rising up as Peace Corps and contributing to the most pressing problems of our time. So a big part of our strategic plan is that comprehensive COVID-19 response and recovery. The and recovery piece is key because it's not just about vaccinations and hand washing and public health interventions. It's about the enormous education gap that COVID has created. It's about the enormous problems with food security, with gender-based violence and domestic violence that the pandemic has just revealed, um, you know, these really immense social and economic problems and exacerbated them, things that existed before, but that now, you know, global development goals have been set back by as much as a decade. So I think people are fired up and excited about being a part of that comprehensive recovery throughout the world. I think the pandemic really made it very, very clear uh, something that Peace Corps and our PCVs ha has always known, which is that we are connected to each other. If we do not contribute to solving problems around the world, if we are isolationist and focused on just our own thing, uh, quote unquote, here at home, we will never make progress. So I think people are very excited about that. Um, I think people are challenged by, obviously, this, this pause, you know, has been really challenging, and the pause has created an opportunity that I think Peace Corps has used to make these investments, but the pause has, I'll be frank with you, created uh, challenges when it comes to recruiting. Recruiting is not the kind of thing that you just show up to an event and the very next day that person signs up for Peace Corps. We all know this having done Peace Corps. You know, it's something that was I was ruminating on for years, right, before I did it. And so due to not being able to go to those events and not being able to have those touch points with candidates for several years, we're now behind, I would say, in terms of where we need to be with uh, telling people that we are back in service and and you know making it clear the process and the things that they have to do to apply and you know Peace Corps service no longer looks like it did back when um, we all know that Peace Corps service has certain restrictions and policies but now there's even more of those you know due to wanting to be safe um, and secure going back uh, in the pandemic so. That is why I think we need your help. We need the help of MPCA. Um, it doesn't even have to be like organized or coordinated. I think if every single person on this call were to do an event at your local high school, do an event at your local church, do an event at your alma mater, um, many hands make light work, you know, uh, and we truly need all hands on deck right now. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you for that call to action. And um, demonstrating a lot of talent and answering uh, uh, two questions in one with the, the pandemic and the, the opportunity that, that exists. I, I hope people will take you up on your, your kind offer to stay even longer than planned and, and talk to you in the, a little bit more in the breakout room. And thanks again, Becca. I really appreciated you joining. Thanks for having me.